Hello everyone. In this presentation, we will be talking about rice stem borer. Rice stem borer. Four species of stem borers attack paddy in Bhutan. They are Chilopartilus, commonly known as spotted stem borer, Serpophaga insertulus, commonly known as yellow stem borer, Serpophaga inotata, commonly known as white stem borer, and Sisamia inferens, commonly known as Asiatic pink stem borer. They belong to the order Lepidoptera and family Cambidae. The life cycle stage of the insect that causes damage is larva. Parts of the plant infested are leaves, stems, and panicles. They attack wide range of hosts, including several grass species, both wild and cultivated, such as maize, sorghum, pearl millet, and rice crops. This presentation will mostly focus on Chilopartilus. However, the life cycle stages, manner of infestation, damages caused, and the general management practices are same or similar for all the four species. Chilopartilus is native to Asia. As aforementioned, the spotted stem borer attacks several grass species, both cultivated and wild. Cultivated crop hosts include maize, sorghum, pearl millet, rice, and sugarcane, and wild hosts include Many species of wild grasses such as elephant grass, scientifically known as Penicetum purpureum, reeds, phragmite species, and Vosia, scientifically known as Vosia cuspidate. The life cycle of Chilopartilus. There are four main stages, namely egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Identification. Eggs are flat and oval, creamy white, and about 0.8 mm long. They are laid in overlapping batches of 10 to 80 eggs on the upper and underside leaf surfaces, mainly near the midribs. They are also covered with buff-colored hairs. Larvae are creamy white to yellowish-brown in color, with prominent reddish-brown head. It has four purple-brown longitudinal stripes and usually with very conspicuous dark brown spots along the back. It has a prothoracic shield or a plate on the dorsal surface of the thorax, which is reddish brown to dark brown and shiny. Pupa is up to 15 mm long, cylinder, shiny, and light yellow brown to dark red brown in color. They pupate and remain inside the host stem. After 7 to 14 days, adults emerge from pupae and come out of the stem. Adult modes are yellow to brown with a scattering of dark scales. The forewing has a thin, brown line along the upper margin of the wing. The outer margin of the forewing has a row of small dark dots. Hind wings are white to grey. In male, the forewings are pale brown and the hind wings are a pale straw colour, whereas in females, the forewings are much paler and hind wings are white. Yellow stem borer White Oval flat eggs are laid in groups of 60 to 100 and covered with brownish hairs from the abdominal tuft on upper surface of the leaf or near the tips of the leaf blade. Larva is creamy in color with reddish brown head. Female moths are yellow, color deepening toward the tip and has a very distinct black spot in the center of each forewing. Male moths are light brown with numerous small brownish dots along the subterminal area and near the tip of the forewing. Asiatic pink stem borer Eggs are bead-like and laid in rows between the leaf sheath and the stem. Larva has an orange-red head and a body which is purplish-pink dorsally and white ventrally. The adult is light brown colored mode with dark brown markings on the forewing. The head and the thorax have a thick brown hair tuft. Damage Symptoms During the initial stages of the larvae, it feeds on the leaf holes, causing spots called foliar lesions and scarring. Later inside larvae pour into central shoot of paddy seedlings and tillers causing a condition known as dead heart. In matured plants, whole panicle becomes whitish and unfilled known as whitehead. The growth stage of the crop at which stem borer causes damage are basically throughout its life cycle including vegetative stage, reproductive stage and ripening stage. General management. The stem borers can be culturally controlled by monitoring avoiding close planting spaces, harvesting the crop at ground level to remove the larvae in stubble, pulling out and destroying the affected tillers, lip clipping prior to transplanting to the field, planting trap crops or plants such as napier grass, avoiding continuous water stagnation. The level of irrigation water can be raised periodically to submerge the eggs deposited on the lower parts of the plant, 
Double plowing kills the caterpillars in the stalks and crop residues. Split application of nitrogenous fertilizers at the right time and at optimum rate. They can also be biologically controlled by promoting parasitic webs such as Cortesia flavives, which attacks the larval stage of the pest. It locates the stem borers while they are feeding inside the plant stems. The webs lays about 40 eggs into a stem borer, open hatching the larvae of the parasitic webs, feed internally in the stem borer and then exits and spin cocoons. Centopimpla stemata operates similarly but attacks the pupa. Habitat management practices that conserve these parasitoids and predators like ants and earwings can help in the control of the spotted stem borer. Pesticide control. Neem products may be applied to the leaf hole following the instructions carefully. Bacillus thuringiensis has also been reported to be effective against the pest. Under severe cases or unavoidable conditions, dimethoid at 2 ml per litre of water can be applied.